Can you guys hear me? Yeah? Okay. Okay, now. <laughs> um, thank you very much for having me here. Um, a little bit of a shift from the very built environment to a little bit more natural. Um, I'm a PhD student at the University of um, Queensland, and um, I'll be talking about my yeah, uh, PhD project. And just a little disclaimer, I'm very new to the phosphor G world, so, um, uh, but I'm very excited to be here and learn from you all. Um, and first, a little bit of uh, background. Um, this is a map of the Mariana Islands, and um, you might have heard of the Mariana Trench, which is the big trench here. And um, this is um, the island of Guam, and um, I lived there for 20 years prior to coming to Australia. And so um, a lot of my work has focused on Guam and also the um, Micronesia region. So I got to travel to um, quite a few of the islands, including the outer islands of um, Micronesia. And um, during this time, like traveling to the atoll islands, like very low-lying islands, they're only a few meters high, um, I came across a lot of the erosion and yeah, seeing that firsthand. And then also um, coming across articles like these that really caught my um, yeah, attention and interest. And that basically led me to um, what I'm studying now. And uh, so the aim of my project is um, to analyze and interpret um, a tall island shoreline movement in 3D um, using drones and laser scanners. And um, so a lot of the previous research um, has focused on um, plant form changes. So here's an example. Let's see. Yeah. Um, here we have an example of the 2D. So usually you use um, modern satellite images, um, satellite imagery, and compare it to uh, historic aerial imagery and um, look at the changes. So um, here is one from uh, Funafuti at all, and yeah, you see how islands have been changing. But again, this is 2D, and uh, the research gap is really uh, what's happening in 3D. And why 3D? Here's just an example. Um, so we have, where is it? So in this example, there's no change. The shoreline is still here, and the vegetation hasn't changed either. But when you look at it in profile, there's a lot of um, shift. Um, so the sand has shifted from this area, um, yeah, ocean, ocean side, but you cannot really see a change in 2D necessarily. And another scenario where we have an expansion, so the sand has moved outward, but it's really, again, uh, just a shift where the sand was more here and it moved over here and you can see it in 2D. So. Um, Okay, so I basically have um, two major studies. One is a pilot study on Heron Island on the Great Barrier Reef, um, where the university conveniently has a research station. And um, so I'm really, it's for a proof of concept and to see if the technology works. And then um, the second project is um, to measure the atoll island dynamics um, on an atoll in Micronesia. And it's to see if the 2D follows the 3D changes. And here again, um, here we have Heron Island, and here is a um, atoll in, um, it's called Kilisi Atoll in uh, Yap State, in the Federated State of Micronesia. And you can't really see, but yeah, over here is Philippines, and then Australia is here. So it's the northern western Pacific. Um, and so for the pilot study, just a brief overview. This is uh, my field work. So I already did some uh, this year, 2023. I'll, I'll be doing the same thing in 2024. Um, so I basically take a mobile um, laser scanner and also a um, terrestrial laser scanner and a um, drone. So we're doing structure promotion as well. And, um, and also yeah, collecting survey grade GPS data. And um, um, analyzing all these um, and comparing how these technologies work, if we need to use them together or one or the other works better. Um, so we're getting point cloud and uh, DMs as a result. And then we also um, compare, um, co uh, compare it to data somebody else collected from 2022 and LIDAR data from 2009. Um, I don't know, is anybody familiar with GeoNadir? Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> so um, GeoNADA is a platform, so they offer uh, open data drone images. And so I found images for Heron Island uh, on that platform. So, um, and you can see it's, yeah, they're getting more and more data. So if anybody is interested in drone images and uh, collecting images, uh, you should check out this site. Um, 
yeah, here's just the example for Heron Island. And so the nice thing, you can also download the original um, stone images and um, yeah, do your own model. And then another data source is um, ELVIS. It's a free and open access elevation data set for Australia. And um, so I also found uh, data for Heron Island. And as far as I know, like um, with Australia, there's a lot of open data, but um, they only release it after three years. Uh, so if you want to get anything newer, you have to pay. But if you're happy with all the data, then you get it for free. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's always. And then, yeah, um, regarding the software, so I'm using um, the laser scanner, the handheld laser scanner I'm using. It's called uh, GeoSlam, so it's the proprietary software that comes with it. And then also for the drone images, I'm using um, Metashape. I know it's not open source, but <laughs> for the analysis part, um, I'm just getting started. So I'm using um, Cloud Compare. And then uh, so far, I've been using a lot of Arc Pro, but I am uh, leaning towards yeah, getting more into QGIS and any other um, software packages that are out there that I'm hopefully learning about this week. And so if you have any recommendations, please talk to me. Um, and then, yeah, just some primary results. This is Heron Island. Um, and here we have yeah, our uh, GPS. This is the terrestrial um, regal laser scanner. This is the handheld GeoSlam. So we can also, um, this system is quite nice because you can put it on a drone, um, but it takes quite a bit of like unscrewing and you have to take the camera. There's a little camera on top here. Here, what was it? Uh, here um, to get a uh, colored point cloud. So if you want to put it on the drone, you have to detach the camera. So it's just a lot of, um, yeah, logistics and a lot of time when you're on these islands, you don't have that much time available. So in, um, we decided not to put it on the drone, but there's a capability. Um, and then yeah, just ground control points. And here we have um, the drone we're using in this case is a Mavic 3 multispectral. Um, here just shows all the elevation data points um, I collected. And then just an example with the Roman images, we also did test flying it at different uh, altitudes and using different um, um, ground control points. So these are like uh, one by one meter tiles. And then the small ones are these uh, vinyl tiles. They're like 30 by uh, 30 centimeters. And um, you can see quite a difference. Well, the image is a little bit hard to see here, but in the 60 meter, you can still see like footprints, but then in the 100 meter, it's um, harder to see this. But of course, it's always a trade-off. If you're flying higher, you get more, you know, larger coverage, but um, yeah, less resolution. And um, also we can still, this was quite a good test because you can still see the, um, um, the smaller targets. But if you're having to process a, a large island and you have these tiny targets, like I've had a really hard time locating, even if you kind of know the general area you put them, it's just sometimes really ca uh, camouflaged, yeah. Um, and then here's the um, resulting um, uh, digital surface model. And then, oops, um, here's the ortho mosaic. And um, yeah, this is the um, surface model of the whole island. Um, and then this, the top is from the, the point cloud resulting from the, um, the GeoSlam. So we actually, um, there were three different scans we put together. Um, and the way this um, um, scanner works, you have to uh, do a closed loop, but it shouldn't be longer than ideally like 20, 30 minutes. And because the island is a little bit bigger, we had to do like smaller segments and then merge them together. Um, and here at the bottom, you can just see a profile and then, yeah, what that looks like. Um, and so to the Atoll Islands, uh, it's the same uh, principle, uh, except we didn't bring the regal. If you <laughs> saw maybe earlier, it's like this huge <laughs> um, instrument. It's just not feasible. And it's also like it's often like the issue of bringing batteries to, um, yeah, on the plane. So uh, we did not bring that, um, but we had the, the drone and also the... Uh, mobile laser scanner. And um, so we did it just in August, so two months ago, and I'm uh, going to do the same thing again uh, next year, but then also comparing it to imagery, what I showed you um, before, like, and somebody actually um, has done um, similar work in the Federated States of Micronesia, looking at the uh, satellite imagery and comparing it with historic aerial images. Um, and just here, a little bit of the for the field work, we didn't stay on a fancy <laughs> cruise ship or uh, Liverpool, but we went on this little um, uh, fishing boat. It was like a 12-hour ride to the atoll. 
and um, here's the atoll and the islands that we um, surveyed, and so they were all uninhabited, like smaller islands. And um, yeah, we got to a um, little bit over a week, um, we surveyed uh, 10 islands. And um, yeah, we decided depending on the size, exposure, what kind of features were available, um, and then also cultural reasons, for example, we wanted to survey this island and then just not, like a week before we went, were gonna go there, um, we were told that there's a taboo, so somebody has died and um, nobody can access the island for a while, so we couldn't go there, so a lot of like, yeah, cultural reasons we couldn't do certain, uh, survey certain islands. And um, let's see, challenges. Um, because I'm looking at the um, the beach, so um, we also want to do this during low tide, so we have to yeah work with the tide or <laughs> raise the tide. Um, weather is often an issue, of course, when you're flying the drone. Um, if it gets too windy, you can't fly. If it's raining, you shouldn't be flying. Um, also, the islands are um, usually uh, vegetated, so we cannot have any ground control points um, in the island, I mean, in the interior, so it's only around. Um, equipment failure, like my phone cracked the second day, which is <laughs> good, and uh, um, also the drone overheated, like we were actually afraid it might just yeah, fall out of the sky, like um, they're rated to like 40 degrees Celsius and it reached over 50. Um, so yeah, and then general logistics, just getting to the island, like bringing the gear, there are a lot of um, yeah, challenges. Um, and also on um, a lot of the islands, there's no internet. Um, so you really have to think and download all, you know, all the base maps, anything you, you know, might need. Um, also, like with um, power supply, like they're all, like extra things you really have to think about and plan ahead. And birds, we thought might be an issue because a lot of, yeah, the islands have a lot of birds and they might not be used to drones. But uh, thankfully, that yeah, that wasn't an issue. Um, and here I'm just gonna go briefly through the the results. Like um, this just shows the. Um, and there are also mosaics, but um, yeah, so I also have the 3D models um, later, but I'm still processing, so I just got back recently. Um, here's an island also. Um, what we try to do, it's not just concentrate on the on the main island, but um, get as much of the reflet as possible, because um, of course the islands are affected or uh, they get the sediment uh, supplies from the reflet. So we also want to see if there's any movement, especially after a storm, if we can detect any changes in that. Um, here was a small sandbank, and as you can see, there's a lot of waste around, so it's actually kind of dangerous to get to that. Um, yeah, just another small island. Um, here, it doesn't, this is just a satellite imagery, it doesn't show the actual um, uh, data we collected, but that was the biggest island. Um, and then this was another one. There's a, I mean, you can't see it because I don't have the, um, the all the imagery, but there was a, um, a lot of it was eroded, so this is like one of the, um, uh, this island showed the highest erosion rate in the last um, several years, and a lot of like yeah trees have fallen in. And these are the last two islands before we were heading back. And yeah, so now I have to uh, do more processing and go back again next year to collect more data. And so um, I welcome any questions and comments, and especially recommendations about any software I should really be using or platform I should put the data on, or yeah anything you have to um, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Um, just because it's all being recorded, if we don't have the mics, we don't get the recording. So just see if we can come over. Oh, jump over here for us. Yep. Hello. Uh, yeah. Do you? Thanks for the talks. Really interesting. Um, do you find that when you're doing the drone-based three D modeling around the shoreline, it's really hard to get a picture of the shoreline because the models are really mucked around as soon as you're flying over water, if there's any movement? Um, well, I haven't processed too many, so I don't know in the, yeah, um, how it's gonna pan out, but um, we, we really try to have um, good ground control points, so, um, because other if we don't have any ground control points, even the drone I forgot to mention, but it has um, RTK, um, it's still, it has like the, the bulging effect, and so, um, yeah, so the ground control points are essential. Okay, great, thanks. Hello, uh, great talk, fantastic, really interesting stuff that you're working on. Um, one thing that I was interested in if you were considering doing is looking at the changes in vegetation on the islands and 
if you looked into point cloud tree segmentation um, for, because you have quite a lot of point cloud data there um, and also service and uh, data service models and elevation models. Um, from that, uh, I don't know if you've looked at it much, but you can quite uh, quickly count uh, all of your trees and also segment them individually within the point clouds to make a, an individual identified point cloud for each tree mm -hmm. on your island, um, on any island, um, which I, I found really useful in uh, looking at like forestry management and in this case, environmental management, uh, especially if you have multiple years of trees, you can uh, rerun the same um, processing for that and then identify trees that have fallen, specific trees that have fallen in specific locations and what how mm -hmm. they would, uh, um, I don't know if that's something you've looked at already, but it sounds like it'd be quite relevant to stuff that you're working on. Um, that's actually a reason why I, I purchased a multi-structural version of the drone and not just a regular one to look at this, but it's not part of my, my thesis, So, but in the future, but I figured it doesn't hurt to collect this additional data. But I think if you do the whole island, um, because we're not flying the drone with the, the LiDAR, um, we won't have LiDAR data for the whole um, island. So um, for the laser scan, we only like right now walking around, I'm walking around the perimeter of oh the nice. island and just gonna go in as much as possible to get a little bit of the understory. But um, yeah, not the whole island. But in the future, that will be great. And actually there are quite a few people in my lab that are working on the tree segmentation and yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. It looks really fantastic. It's a great project to get out on the island and mm -hmm. it seems like it's got some good funding because you've got some cool gear. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm interested to know a uh, sort of similar to Staff's question around performance over water because you'll have some shallow water ecosystems you want to look at. Um, have you seen any results in your data from either LIDAR or structural motion or other techniques that anything to talk about around the, that shallow water observation? Um, yeah, so this is like what's kind of an afterthought. Originally, we were just going to do the, the beach and that's why always like uh, um, we're trying to fly during um, low tide. So we'll see how, yeah, how useful the data is actually going to be because definitely the point cloud you can see we're in the in the water areas, there are a lot more holes and yeah, so it's a little bit more tricky. So I don't have an answer right now, but maybe next time. <laughs> I also wanted to um, give some thanks, especially to the uh, travel grant program, because otherwise I wouldn't be here, and uh, to my collaborators and my advisory team. So thank you very much.